My favorite Raptor memory is my first broadcast as a Raptor announcer because I love the franchise and I love Toronto and I love Canada. And my first broadcast was Vince Carter's first NBA game. That year was a lockout year. We played Boston twice, once at Sky Dome and the other game in Boston. Then we opened up the regular season in Boston. February 5th, 1999. I was so nervous. Jack Armstrong and I did radio that year. And afterwards, I was drenched with perspiration. I mean, I was so nervous and the game was so fast. Remember, I had done 18 years of college basketball with DePaul and the University of Michigan. So I'm used to a college game in the 60s, slow it down, and then here, 94 feet, and it was a blur and the Raptors won the game, a huge game for Kevin Willis, Vince Carter making his NBA debut, and it was fantastic. I mean, it was, it was really magic. I mean, I loved everything about calling Raptor games. I loved the front office, I loved the coaching staff, I loved the players. It was a brand new franchise, so to speak, and I was a part of that building foundation in a small way as a broadcaster, but it was electrifying and I saw what Vince Carter was capable of doing. And so nothing surprised me that year. He won Rookie of the Year and he deserved it. The, about the fourth year in the league, when Vince started having issues with the knee, where he was going down, I started wondering his longevity, how long he was gonna be an NBA player, but to his credit, you know, he worked on his body, nutrition, whatever the case may be. And here we are, 22 years. I think it's a great, great story. Staples Center, the City of Angels. The Toronto Raptors road swing continues with a visit to Kobe Bryant and the Lake Show. Bryant. Joined by Leo Rounds and Norma Wick. Always a pleasure. As you know, Leo, we're in Los Angeles, and they love their stars. And in the NBA, maybe the biggest star is Kobe Bryant. It was a Sunday night, 6 o'clock tip, late January. These are the dog days of the NBA season. Players are hurt. They're mentally fatigued, they're physically exhausted. And here we are, under 500, taking on a Laker ball club. And it's not like the Lakers were filled with superstars, you know, associated with Kobe Bryant. With all due respect, Spoosh Parker, Chris Mim, I mean, come on. And the Lakers probably took the Raptors for granted, but then Kobe became Kobe. And Kobe took over. And in that third quarter alone, it was all Kobe Bryant. And one flashback to that game was Kobe Bryant with a steal at midcourt going in for a slam dunk. And that was a punctuation mark as far as the turnaround for the Lakers in that game. And it wasn't Kobe one on five, it was one on 15. I mean, he was all over the floor. He got 81 points. I'm looking at the stat sheet afterwards and I'm thinking, did I just call an 81 point game? Yes, I did. And it was Kobe Bryant. And I remember there were a couple of plays. Kobe from the right side drew a foul on Joey Graham, went to the line, got three free throws, and then he went to the rim and he got fouled. So here I am, he's got 79 points. 79 points and the crowd wants to see that eight. They don't want to see a seven. They want to see eight. They want to see 80, maybe 81. And I'm thinking to myself like, how much pressure? I mean, the guy at 79 points, he's feeling the pressure about getting 80 or 81. Are you kidding me? So he goes along, makes two free throws, and then they take him out of the ball game. And it was like, wow. They're like, wow. And I mean, his career is not validated because of that 81 point game, but that 81 point game will stick with the entire Kobe Bryant resume as far as just how basketball people view his whole volume of production.